Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 24th, 2022, around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the fact that the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season is changing. Are you prepared? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a while look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is starting to pick up with activity out there, certainly across the East Atlantic. We do have a tropical wave embedded within this monsoon trough that is moving generally towards the west. This poses no risk for development. We have kind of this big system coming off the coast of Africa right now. This also does not really pose much of a risk for development, but both of these will be heading westward over the next couple of days. So we'll just kind of have to keep an eye on this. But generally speaking, the Atlantic Basin is pretty quiet for now. For the Orlando, Florida area forecast today, we are expecting generally a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms today with a temperature of around 92 degrees, east wind at about 10 miles per hour. And for tonight, again, a 10% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly before about 8 p.m. this evening, and a low temperature of about 75 degrees again with an east wind about 5 to 10 miles per hour. In the East Pacific Basin, we are continuing to monitor a system out here. This is a system that could go on to develop into a tropical cyclone over the next couple of days. This will be moving generally westward across the East Pacific and poses no substantial risk for development uh, because or no substantial risk for impacts to land rather as this will be moving away from land at this particular point if we look at the visible satellite imagery from this morning we notice that the storm is again positioned generally speaking right about here it's a pretty large area so there is some showers and thunderstorms uh, impacting portions of mexico right now but the overall system is expected to be moving generally westward over the next couple of days and then head off towards the northwest but no significant impacts to land are expected during this time so that is certainly some good news at that in the atlantic basin we are watching the potential for what could be happening later in the season we know that everything is pretty quiet right now but the hurricane season is beginning to change Generally speaking, there is a pretty substantial risk for some type of impact this year, as we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks, especially in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the northwestern portions of the Bahamas, where there is a very high to high risk of impacts across this region, with a moderate risk of impacts extending from the U.S. East Coast northward up the Northeast Corridor. We notice if we look at the zoomed in revised impacts here, again, generally speaking, the Caribbean and portions of the island uh, chain this year has a very substantial risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts, a 9 out of 10 risk impact area. Now, this could be just from a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point, or this could be something as substantial as a major hurricane. Now, obviously, when we're talking about major hurricanes, that chance decreases significantly, but obviously a tropical storm could cause some very substantial impacts. So this doesn't necessarily say that there's going to be devastation, obviously. That's something we don't want to see. But this basically gives an idea that there is a 9 out of 10 chance of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point within this very high risk area. And then, of course, the corresponding values uh, with in a given area indicate your chance of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. So obviously the island chain all the way up through portions of Mexico and Florida have a 9 out of 10 risk of seeing a tropical cyclone within uh, you know, 25 miles of a given point. Now obviously for Texas, Louisiana, and portions of the Gulf Coast, that risk varies anywhere between 7 to 8 out of 10, and then even South Carolina, 8 out of 10 chance with then chances decreasing as you get further north within that moderate risk zone. So there is still some potential that we could see, you know, impacts as far north really as Massachusetts even this year uh, with a 5 out of 10 risk of seeing tropical cyclone, a, a tropical cyclone within 25 miles of a given point there. So it is certainly something to kind of keep in mind. But again, evaluate your risk area and prepare now rather than wait to prepare when it's too late. Always some good news and advice there. So in the Atlantic Basin, what we will be expecting over the next couple of weeks? Well, we can kind of look at some of the ensemble forecasts here. This is the European Ensemble Control Forecast, the 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. So just a big fancy way of saying, well, at 39,000 feet, we either got rising or sinking air. And these corresponding uh, values here in the shades of blue, teal, and green, that's upward air. 
uh, upward moving air and in the oranges and reds that's suppressed air downward moving air and not allowing for tropical cyclone formation so basically right now this is july 23rd and as you go uh, basically down here in the chart you get longer range in time so this goes up to august 7th we noticed that in the Atlantic Basin, again, we're kind of right now in a pretty decent phase where we've got some upward moving air. And that's why we see that in the satellite imagery, we noticed that there actually is some upward moving air over Africa and the Atlantic Basin. So that corresponds pretty nicely. And then as we progress forward with time, we will have some sinking air in the basin over, you know, especially the East Pacific, which is certainly good. But then all that upward moving air goes over phases two and three. And we can kind of see this on a different diagram here. We basically have the upward moving air centered over phases two and three over the Indian Ocean uh, as we progress forward in time. And what this basically indicates to me is we're going to be seeing a very favorable pattern, at least in the uh, air, you know, basically within the... Um, interseasonal variability will have a pretty favorable setup. The problem is going to be the dry air. We notice that if we go back to that satellite imagery, notice how much dry air there is around the Atlantic right now. And that's going to remain the problem for at least the next several of weeks as we are still not yet into the pattern which favors significant tropical development, especially in the East Atlantic for now. So when that when will that all be changing? Well, we can look at the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run. We we'll should look at the relative humidity in the atmosphere and kind of just see what we're looking at here. So again, we notice that right now there is some moisture out there in the deep tropics, and this is generally a result of these tropical waves that come off and kind of seed the environment, uh, but they don't really last long in all this dry air. And we notice that that kind of continues along. We just have this dry air that plagues the main development region really for the next several weeks. And this goes out to about August 9th and we just have dry air, you know, burst after dry air burst after dry air burst. Now, one would think that this is a particularly unfavorable sign that we must be entering a 2013 repeat 2.0. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not really the case. This is generally expected again. Early August development, you know, late July, early August, isn't the most favorable time for tropical activity, even, you know, given the fact that August 20th begins that ramp up. But again, September 10th is our peak in the Atlantic Basin, not August 10th. So again, you know, if we start to see signs that after August 20th, we're not getting development, that's going to start to raise my alarm bell a little bit more uh, for a, a repeat like that. Um, but I'm not going uh, to take that, you know, bait right now. I'm just not seeing that, and it seems like things will begin to pick up, especially come August 20th, I do believe that, so we'll be looking for that. And we can kind of further see this in the European ensembles. Again, this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly, so departures from average. We noticed that the Atlantic Basin as a whole remains uh, pretty much with below normal pressure anomalies. They do quickly peak up uh, for you know just maybe a day or two, but then they quickly go back to being below average. And that corresponds pretty nicely with having these trade winds that continue uh, to be westernly across the deep tropics. The European ensembles have been very good at predicting this because if we correlate this to what the GFS ensembles show, the GFS ensembles basically predict that to be going bye-bye, and that's just not the case. The European ensembles are pretty much within that realm of believability with these westerly winds continuing across the deep tropics, only helping to warm the deep tropics. So this will continue to be a good sign. Um, we'll have to watch how the canary current up here evolves because that is pumping a little bit of, of dry and cool air into the deep tropics, but we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, but generally speaking, it looks like about after August 10th or so, especially after August 20th, uh, the pattern is going to begin to flip and the hurricanes will come a knocking. So you better be prepared now uh, while you still have the time. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.